I always loved looking on the internet for weird websites. I used to do it a lot with a group of friends of mine. We always had competitions of who could find the weirdest website. We sometimes found pretty disturbing ones. There was one where the site sold dead animals and another one selling allegedly used condoms from famous celebrities. We had only one rule. We were to update each other every time we found a weird website. About a month ago, my friend found a sort of lottery website. It was hard to explain what it exactly was, but basically you pay the website $1, then it randomly gives you a gift. Making an account was easy, you just had to enter your email address. The gifts ranged from download codes from extremely old games like the first Silent Hill to subscription codes for weird websites that I've never heard of. Every day me and my friends would log on and spend $2 trying to see what you can win. We never won anything we actually used and about a week later we decided to stop wasting money. I decided I want to try it one more time so I spent one more dollar on the site. When I heard what I won I immediately got a bad case of the chills. It said congratulations. You're a proud winner of a 12 month subscription for the website killers tour. It then sent an email to me with a verification code and a link to the website. I thought to myself before I do anything I should instant message my friend first. I texted my friend Jake saying, Dude, have you ever heard of the website killer, Tor? Jake replied, No, why? I instantly replied saying, I went on that lottery site for the last time and I want a 12-month subscription to a website called Killer, Tor. The next message Jake sent scared me. He said, I don't know man, that sounds sketchy as hell. I know my cousin who recently started using the lottery site said that most of the websites that you can win subscriptions to are off the radar websites. I was now shivering in fear. I texted him back saying, what do you mean off the radars? Jake explained that they were websites that won't appear when you Google them and some of the websites you win access to are on the deep web and to be careful. Later that night, I tried to sleep it off, but I kept wanting to know what killer, Tor was. I was curious as to what the purpose of it is. If Jake is right about these sites being off the radar, doesn't that mean they could be illegal? I could go to jail for taking part. Was it worth the risk? I decided to download Tor browser, enter the link I got, and not subscribe to anything just yet. When I opened the link on my computer, it was just a white blank page with an input verification code slapped in the middle. My curiosity got the best of me and I decided to enter the code. I got redirected to a homepage of what seems to be the weirdest website I've ever found. The text shown on the website was strange. There was one that said, hire someone to end you today. And sick of someone? Hire someone to end them. This looked extremely sketchy for me, so I then clicked on the watch videos streaming live. It randomly directed me to a video that was rendering. The title was, Professor Cunningham Being Ended, Requested by Dave. I wasn't aware of what was going on, so I continued to look around the video I was on. There was a comment section with a bunch of people talking to each other, and then a meter that says how many people are watching the video. Believe it or not, there were 30,000 people watching it. The video suddenly started. It was a man holding a video camera, he was walking into a house, and then he walked into what seemed to be a bedroom. There was an old gentleman sleeping in the bed, then the guy holding the camera went closer to him and shot five rounds into his chest. I was about to vomit onto my screen when I saw what happened. People in the comments were saying, yeah, he's dead, he's dead. When the video stopped, it asked if I wanted to end someone. I nearly fainted. People were getting ended as requested by other people. It made me sick in the stomach. I went back to the comment section and said, I'm calling the police on you six sadistic monsters. While I was dialing 911, I wish I hadn't said that since my computer immediately went dead. It started to reboot and by the time the police showed up, I explained to them everything, the lottery website, the killer, tour thing, and everything else I saw. They told me that it sounds like a prank, requested that I show them the lottery website and the email. I went on my just booted computer and I couldn't find anything. My browser history was empty. My email address was empty. I had no proof of what I saw. I tried going on the lottery website and it said, this website does not exist. After a half hour of searching, the police officer was furious. He left my apartment and said I should stop crying wolf. 
I couldn't tell if this was a dream or not. That was until my other friend Henry messaged me. He said, dude, guess what? I want a 12-month subscription for a website killer. Tor worried for his safety. I replied, what? Did you do anything on the site? Henry texted me back immediately saying, yeah, LMAO, I told them to come in me, as if that will ever happen. Like many people, I've checked out the deep web from time to time. Some of the stuff I've found still haunts me to this day. But one day I found an AI image generation program, but whose name I won't say for reasons I'll get into. I'd mess around with it like anyone else would. But what was crazy was just how advanced this program was. None of the warped, alien-looking text or extra fingers you'd usually see in such situations. I would ask it to generate everything from the inside of my sock drawer to where an item I've lost ended up. It'd show me literally everything in my sock drawer, and when I asked where the AirPods I got for my birthday last year ended up, it generated an image of a lost and found box at the bowling alley I went a few months ago for a party with some of my friends. And sure enough, my AirPods were still in there. At some point, I got sick of conjuring up realistic pornographic images of my favorite celebrities and began using it to see how far its capabilities went. I asked it to show me images of dreams I've had, and each time I'd get images from dreams I still remember, like the one where I'm getting close with Gaston at Disney World, and even dreams I've completely forgot about, like the recurring dream I used to have of being chased by wolves in the locker room at my old middle school, except it's a never-ending maze. I asked the AI what happened to people I went to school with that I've lost touch with and after double-checking on Google and social media, every image turned out to be true. I know what you're thinking and I asked the AI what would happen if I won the lottery. I figure if this thing can generate images of the future as well as the past, present and so on, I'd rather see if I should ask it for the winning Powerball numbers. I'm not sure how such a thing would happen but it showed me dead in an alley with a vaguely Thai language sign in the background. And finally, I asked it to show me something I dared not ask for. What am I doing five seconds before I die? The image popped up and I couldn't believe it. But without any indication of date or time, and given the nature of the image, it seemed avoidable. But not forever. I was too freaked out so I deleted the program. Unfortunately, this caused a crazy-ass virus to mess up my computer. I hurried to shut off the surge protector, and that was the end of my computer. The computer I not only spent hundreds to build from scratch, but the one I used for my job. The computer that my more of a tech was than me friend couldn't save. I told him everything, and he told me that it was the dumbest thing I could ever do. I tried to tell him that I had damn near every antivirus software on my computer, but he said that the whole thing was basically done for. Even if I could salvage what I could, I'd end up blowing through a good chunk of my savings to fix it. Thankfully, all the important crap was up in the cloud. And thankfully, the images I generated, featuring nearly every male celebrity you can think of in various states of undress, weren't backed up. God knows what would happen if such images got out there. Thankfully, I had my backup laptop, which was for travel and power outages. I began to do some research on the program and only found a poorly translated blog that the program was created by an occult researcher who was applying AI image generation research to a host of various occult and scientific ideas. That just went over my head. I think it worked by using the AI to scan images from various parts of the multiverse and combine them with mystical energies. The idea was to synergize magic with the physical and metaphysical sciences or something. So that's it. This little mid-journey knockoff was literally some multiversal magic trick. And one part of the page said something I didn't notice. Apparently there's a deep cost for using the program. And I'd discover that cost a week later when they discovered a malignant tumor in my brain. And so now, I'm posting this knowing that my time is almost off. Knowing that if you find an AI image generator to make sure you know what you're getting into. Knowing that five seconds after I post this, I'll be dead. You see, the image I saw was of me. Dead on the floor with my laptop on its side. 